Welcome to What If, Season 1, Episode 8, Thoughts, What If Ultron 1. So, as usual, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, reacting to it, reviewing episodes, special videos made by New Rockstar Screen Night, Nervous, CBR Screen Crush, Black Nerd Comedy, IGN, Heavy Spoilers, Magic Maggie, Emergency, Awesome. Not saying all of them did one or more videos on this specific episode or even show, just that they're good for Disney Plus shows that tie into the MCU. So if this is the first of these videos by me that you watch, then just to get you up to speed, I love every MCU movie. They're all in the 7 out of 10 to 10 out of 10 range, although I don't make any excuses for Iron Man 2. And I love every episode that's come out so far of the Disney Plus MCU shows. Just We're all 10 out of 10 for WandaVision, Captain America and the Winter Soldier, Season 1 of Loki, and the episodes of this show that have aired, including this one. And... Yeah, the, the pacing is, again, quite good. And there aren't any broad performances, although there is a little broad animation, some broad jokes in this episode. It is a very dark episode. Yet again, the acting performances are great. I think the episode lives up to its potential based on the concept that it explores. It's got great character moments for all of its characters. Everyone behaves in character. It's at the very least, for this episode's universe. Now, Nando V Movies, uh, fairly recently, made a video talking about... I, You know, I, I forget exactly what video, but he was talking about the MCU, and he said that grief is... I think he said it's the main theme for Phase 4 of the MCU. So here we yet again have, you know, Hawkeye's, with, with Hawkeye's grief over his family. And let's see if there's pretty well on diversity. And yet again, a bad guy wins. Which really is true of every episode so far, except for the first one. Really badass Hawkeye taking out Ultron bots with arrows, and he's got a stealth suit. And I do I don't remember exactly. We've seen it in the MCU before. I I forget exactly where. And Black Widow badass is is badass taking down Ultrons with the motorcycle with the bombs, and she's got the electric staffs. We've seen them before, but I'm not complaining about seeing them again. And Clint has a robotic arm. One of the Easter egg people said that. It is a repurposed Ultron arm, and it's showing that, you know, in order to get by, you may have to accept things like that in this dystopia. And we see that they're in Russia. They're headed to the, I want to say, Kremlin. Ultron's voice emitting from Vision's body is very sinister, and he managed to take out all the Avengers, and we see him fire the nukes. Fascinating, and Ultr Ultron Vision just cuts Thanos in half lengthwise. Holy crap. I mean, if Thanos' children weren't so eager to pry the Mind Stone out of his forehead, and, you know, that didn't lead to Vision being so badly wounded when he encountered Thanos in Infinity War, it's possible he could have done that in, you know, yeah, in, in that movie as well. You know, we know that the, the beam is extremely strong. And, you know, some of the Easter egg people pointed out that, fittingly, Thanos is cut exactly in half. You know, his the two parts of his now dead body are perfectly balanced, as all things should be. And we see Ultron creating thousands of bots with the Reality Stone. You know, one of the there was a commenter on one of the Easter egg videos who said that now we know that Thanos was actually being very humble when he used the Infinity Stones. And yeah, it really, like... <laughs> and and it's, it's really cool, because it is, like... You know, if you go back and you look at Infinity War, I mean, when would Thanos have created a lot of bots? Okay, I, he could have done it when he was facing Iron Man and the others, but at first he thinks that he's only fighting one person, 
And once, you know, I, I would agree that there are maybe points during the fight where he had enough breathing room that he could have tried creating at least some. I think he wanted to show that he could beat them on his own. Ultron, meanwhile, he's all about efficiency, so just, you know, it's more efficient if you create, yeah. And we see him laying waste to a number of worlds that we see in the movies. Listen, Skynet, I've seen the robot movie and I really don't think it needs a sequel. And it does make perfect sense that Captain Marvel would eventually catch up to Ultron. She can fly insanely fast, she can scan for life from space and such, you know. Like, yeah, you know, if, like, hypoth I'm, I'm, I figure that the, the you know, th this, this is one for all the people who said why didn't Fury, you know, call in Captain Marvel during, uh, uh, yeah, Age of Ultron, you know, now it's in this this time he did and you know she shows up earth is decimated nukes have you know hit all over the place and so you know i don't know if she talks to it, it's possible that she talked to to hawkeye and natasha but the the it's actually yeah now that now that kate bishop is soon going to be hawkeye i guess i have to start calling him clint Anyway, yeah, you know, the, the, maybe she talked to them, maybe she just, like, scanned, I mean, the, very likely she encountered at least one Ultron bot somewhere along the line, and, like, she, she can scan for that, so she, she's flying around the universe scanning for that, maybe she tried to, like, figure out what would be the most, which planets is he most likely to attack, you know, wh which are the ones that had, like, entire civilizations living there rather than just ones where there's barely any life you know like he probably didn't spend forever on mars you know so yeah she's flying around insanely fast scanning for you know i don't know electronic signatures that you know that there's not that much that she can't do she, you know she spots him and flies in you know I, i'm really enjoying seeing you know We've, we've now gotten two episodes, two in a row, in fact, of Captain Marvel facing off against someone where we were like, could she take them down? Because, like, compared to other other fights she's with, that we've seen her in, in the MCU, you know, okay, so she very, like, she faced Thanos and she prevented him from snapping his fingers, even though he had all six stones in the gauntlet. What if she faced off against Ultron with all six Infinity Stones, you know? And, yeah, faced off against Thor. You know, I, I don't know if maybe they, you know, some, like, when they were writing the, the I forget, was it the third episode, maybe? The, the episode where all the Avengers were getting killed off one by one. That episode ends with the promise that Captain Marvel is going to go kick some ass. I, I feel like maybe the writers of that were like, people are going to be really angry if we don't actually put her in episodes where she gets to kick ass. And so we have these two. Nah. It's it's very clever that, you know, when, when Ultron thinks that he's, that his mission is complete, you know, he's, he's like, what... Well, what now then? You know, it's like this existential thing. He can't, he can't handle not having the mission to, to still complete, but he's also really good at doing the mission. You know, he's got six Infinity Stones. He's flying around the universe with thousands, maybe millions of Ultron bots. You know, it's only going to, there's only going to keep being worlds for him to go and kill everyone so for so long you know but then you know he gets awareness he can see the watcher and the watcher's like how can you see you know just yeah and clint points out the archives look like that uh, thing from yeah the place from the end of raiders of the lost ark natasha points out why the kgb used hard copies instead of digitizing 
and the Watcher wants to intervene because Clint won't look at Zola's, you know, it's right there, but it is like, you know, how is he supposed to know that? He does not think there is a solution. And Hawkeye, you know, says that the Death Star plants are not in the main computer. And, you know, when Natasha gets out Zola's file, Clint is like, you know, that was my pile, so, you know, or bo that was my box. So technically, I really, I should get credit for credit for this. Is all I'm saying. partial credit. It evens out to a B plus. Is what I'm saying. And it does make sense that like what would go to Zola's file as the the key. And it is you know she by this time in the MCU she had encountered the one at Camp Lehigh, but it got destroyed. So. You know, the, and, and as she points out, he couldn't have reached it through the, the net. So we do have one computer left that, that can't, yeah. The, see, see this, this dystopia is actually what happens if we rely too much on Wi-Fi. And it is, you know, Hydra put Zola on a computer that was to watch the Russian super soldier program. One of the Easter egg people pointed out, Maybe that means that Zola was the one who gave Zemo the the video, you know, because they they do both want to stop the Avengers. Maybe there's a there's there's probably some sympathy because both of them have names that are four letters and start with a Z and end in a crap. What are they called again? Vowel. I want to say. And Clint uses the USB arrow the, that hacked the helicarrier in the first Avengers so that they have Zola on it and then fire it into one of the bots. Very clever. And I like, you know, Clint is like, you might feel a little sting. Or maybe not. I don't really understand exactly. How, you know, it, it is like, can he feel anything? Is it like... Could, could the data be called pain? Anyway, the and you know they drag the the bot into the room. It, it was quite. I like that you know one of the other bots like reaches out the arm and like grabs hold of, you know it could really screw everything up. But then Natasha throws the shield. She she wields the shield. You know she she would make her father figure proud. And they're actually in the. It is either the room where the final fight in Civil War took place, or it's a room that's very similar to it. It, it, I, th I think it's supposed to be the exact same. I think there's one of the Easter egg people who said it's it's a room similar to it. Um, anyway, and Clint lets himself drop into the group of bots because he doesn't want to fight anymore. It's a reverse of her sacrifice in Endgame. And, you know, Zola says, you know, he, he postulates the reason that he can't stop Ultron is Ultron's not in the same universe anymore, which is really a, a great kind of realization. Yeah, very, very cool. I mean, we, the audience, already knew that, but now Natasha also knows. I really love the fight between the Watcher and Ultron. I like that, you know, at the start of or, or very early in the fight, Ultron uses the reality zone to make the place where they fight completely bare and plain. There's nothing left for Uatu to use tactically. You know, he can't take cover behind anything. He can't pick something up and throw at uh, Ultron. And you just watched. Ultron is offended at the Watcher. He's like, you could have ended all this pain. Okay, so massive Ultron biting at the universe. That has to be like a test drive for how they're going to make it look when that's Galactus. Although, as one of the Easter egg people pointed out, I mean, Galactus only eats a planet at a time. You know, Ultron, this is even bigger than, than Ultron, than, than Galactus. And we see them in a universe where Steve Rogers became president. And finally, the Watcher turns to Strange Supreme... And of course, he wants to hear him say, Doctor Strange at that time had way too much of an ego to turn down 
the powerful Uatu asking him for help. And it is also, like, last time they spoke, Uatu was like, no, 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 you deserve this, you know? And now, yeah, Strange Supreme is like, well, well, well. I believe they left Benedict Cumberbatch's name off the opening credits. They only put it at the, you know, at the very start of the ending credits. They wanted to keep it a surprise. Good call. I, I hope no one, like, looked at the IMDb credits before, you know, that's, in, in general, you, you might spoil cool surprises if you do that before you watch something. Anyway, so I guess maybe the season finale will be the one where Strange Supreme and the others fight Ultron. So, yeah, that's going to be incredible. Uh, ex yeah, when I, when, I, when I made that note, they hadn't released the, the I, I don't think they had released the trailer otherwise. Yeah, now, it it's pretty much a sure thing. The finale is going to be that. And I guess maybe that's going to be the thing for both seasons. So far, they're only talking about two seasons that, you know, as, as far as I can tell, at least, they're going to choose at least one major cast member from most, possibly all, of the episodes you know, leading up to the finale, they're, you know, they're going to pluck them from the multiverse and assemble a team, and that team is going to take on the overall threat, the threat to the multiverse, which, you know, there's no, re there's nothing in the rule book that says they can't come up with another huge threat for next season. So, yeah, I, you know, I remember actually believing that this one was this was going to be an MCU thing that wasn't really going to try to fit in continuity and build to something. I don't know what I was thinking. Of course they're not that they, they they will always find a way to to tie these things together and I love them for it. This is this is so much fun. This is one of the best of these uh, Disney Plus MCU shows. So the actors from the movies in this episode are Jeremy Renner, Benedict Cumberbatch, and Toby Jones. Everyone else is a sound alike. I wasn't wild about, I want to say her name is Lake Bell, as Natasha before this episode. She's growing on me. She's, I, I don't know if she's getting better or I'm just, or, or I'm changing my mind exact, but I, th I thought she did a really great job in this episode. I thought she sounded a lot like Scarlett Johansson. This episode is actually a lot closer to the comic book Age of Ultron than Avengers 2. Which really, you know, it, it took the name of the comic and fairly little else. A lot of people were very frustrated. And I remember actually there were people saying... Because they took the title for this, it's going to be forever before we see the proper story. And that did used to be the case, but now with the MCU, you know, with stuff like this, it's, it's really cool. I, I, if you had told me years ago that we were going to get an, a serial killer story inside a major comic property you know, adaptation. You you can get it in comic books, but in movies, you know, the, for a long time, the movies were really slow to go as wild as the comics did. And now we got there. It's, it's yeah, this is really, really cool. And Ross Marquand is playing Ultron. You know, they, they did not get back James Spader. I forget... I, I, I'm not 100% sure. I, I think there was some... He he didn't have that great of an experience with the... You know, making the movie or some something. You know, same thing for... Hugo Weaving, who, you know, played Red Skull in the... the yeah, the first time we saw him in the movies. And since then, Ross Marquand has been playing him. Both in, you know, he, he's, yeah, he plays the role in Infinity War Endgame, and he voiced the role in the first episode of this show. 
apparently Ross Marquand is like renowned for his incredible voice impressions. Yeah, he's he's yeah, he's incredibly talented. And and it's that thing of like a lot of people who can do impressions are good at impressions and they're funny, but they're not necessarily incredible actors. You know, acting is incredibly difficult. Ross Marquand is both. He's a great impressionist and a great actor. You know, he he gives really strong performance. Like Ultron could so easily be a one-note boring character, but you know, I, I pointed out he was legitimately offended that the the watcher didn't intervene, even though he, he had the power and he knew that there were these universes in the multiverse. But yeah, I, I hope they keep giving him more. And you know, one of the Easter egg people said they they'd like to see Marquand be given an original character in the MCU. That would be great too. I yeah. I felt that it made a lot of sense that Clint would let himself drop to his death. His family are dead and they're never coming back. This isn't like endgame where there was a chance you know, to, to bring them back, and, you know, because remember, when Natasha approaches him, the thing he says is, don't give me hope. He knows there there it's hypothetically possible, but he doesn't, he can't let himself hope that it could be, because he's afraid it won't, but in this, like, there's nothing, there's you know, what could they possibly do to, to, you know, hypothetically, like, if he knew that time travel was an option and they had a good plan for, like, getting to the, uh, what's it called? The, the, or, yeah, creating a gauntlet. They don't have the nano gauntlet in this, you know, at this point. And, you know, then, yeah, maybe, but this is a reality where, you know, like, the reason that the Avengers were able to create the Nano Gauntlet were, you know, they had Tony and, you know, Banner working on it. Both of them are dead. You know, I, I don't, I'm not sure I see any, at least not any good guy inventing time travel in the universe we see in this episode. So, yeah, you know, Clint really doesn't have anything left. And, I mean, it must really destroy you. He lost three children and a wife that's yeah you know natasha isn't as you know she's not really willing to give up in this episode she's more used to being alone and she wants to clear the red in her ledger but yeah amazing episode i cannot wait for the finale although obviously as soon as we get it it's going to be such you know, one of, one of my friends who also loves the MCU said, there's going to be a drought of MCU content. You know, I, it's wild. To, oh, to be fair, to be fair, we are getting it. Eternals fairly soon. What What is that, like a month away by now? You know, so it's not, there's not nothing. But Disney Plus wise, we're not getting anything that is not also going to theaters for a while. And that, yeah, I, I don't know. Did they like accident maybe they ran behind on like post-production or yeah I, I don't know anyway yeah it's it's gonna be amazing I I every single episode of these so far has been so good it's just yeah I yeah I I don't actually have more to say about this so I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoy watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.